going to do much shouting and preaching, I hope. Amen. We want to do some teaching. And uh, if you don't think we're in the end days, there's something wrong with your walk with the Lord. <laughs> we're truly in the end days. We've got an election coming up. That is one of the biggest messes I think I've ever seen in the United States of America. And it's, uh, if you vote, it's the lesser of the two evils. It's, uh, it, it's a bad situation. And uh, we, all we can do is pray. And the Bible said there's no power is that God has not ordained. Uh, you you got you to, gotta, I think you got to obey the word if you vote. Uh, and, and people that stand for things that are evil, if they stand for abortion, if they stand for gay marriages, if they stand for gay people adopting, if they're against Israel, then you cannot vote for that person as a Christian. If you do, if you do, you're, you're going against the word of God and you're going against what God has called you to be. Praise the Lord. We, it's hard to live the life and make the right choices. What's Well, don't vote for none of them. <laughs> I ain't going to vote for one that I know that believes in killing babies. I'm not voting for one that believes in gay marriages. I'm not voting for one that, that stands for them principles because the word of God, they say that's in the Old Testament. You go to Romans the first chapter. I don't want to get into that, but, but go to Romans the first chapter and it explains it all. You know, you, you've got to be blind in one eye and can't see out the other if you don't believe the word of God. That's old Kentucky saying. But I want to get into the Galatians here. Uh, Galatians is an image with more than one subject into it, with, with, with multiple subjects. This has multiple subjects in it. And uh, we see a head of gold, a breast of silver, and the thighs of brass, and, uh, and the legs of iron, and the feet of iron and clay. That is symbolic of the four empires that ruled the world. Now, let, let's clear that up. It says it ruled the world. Now, what was the world? The world at that time wasn't the world that we know today. It, they didn't know the whole world that we know today. The, they, the, they had never traveled over to this country and some other countries, Australia and different places. The, all they knew is the world that was in their location that they knew. It was the world they knew that day. They controlled it. Praise the Lord. But see... Uh, we, we, we think of the whole world when it wasn't the whole world. Well, when the stone comes, oh, he'll, he'll rule the whole world. They only ruled the world that they knew that day. Do you get that? Praise God. Let's do a little reading. To second chapter, Daniel, the second chapter, and then I'll get into some other stuff. Hallelujah. The third chapter is about 20 years later. That's when the three Hebrew children were thrown in the fire. That's when Nebuchadnezzar had backslid. He wants a new God. He really wasn't saved, but he knew God. He knew the power of God. He knew that God could answer dreams and do mighty miracles, and he gave God the credit. But it wasn't long. Though. He was one of the greatest kings that ever lived and, and ruled the Babylonian uh, empire because uh, he was the only one and he, uh, until he was insane. God let him go insane for a while, and then he lost his sanity, and he could not rule, and he had to go eat uh, like a, a cow or an oxen. He ate grass and lived out and grew feathers. His hair grew like feathers and lived out in the wilderness and out in the woods. At that period of time, he had lost control of the kingdom, but God restored him to the kingdom. And the Babylonian kingdom, which is gold, was one of the most fantastic kingdoms of all. It was with splendor. The walls were thick and mighty, and then the palace and the, and, the, and the houses and everything about it was just beautiful and splendor and gracious and marvelous. It, it wasn't that the other kingdoms was just as powerful, but they weren't as gracious and most uh, splendor like the Babylonian kingdom was. It was a magnificent place to live uh, in that period of time. Let's read here. It said, in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, first verse, Second chapter. It's the only place you're going to find it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody got it. Praise the Lord. All right. The second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar dreamed the dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Did you ever have a dream and you couldn't go back to sleep? Amen. I have. Praise the Lord. Amen. And it's usually because there's some meaning to that dream. There's something in that dream that's really troubling your spirit. 
And when he had this dream, his spirit was troubled, and he was really worried about it. Somebody say worried about it. Praise God. I'm trying to get everybody's attention. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I love the Lord tonight. Glory to God. And it says in the, in the second verse, Then the king commanded all the magicians and astrologers and sorcerers and, and the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans, if you listen to Sister Laura Sunday when she preached, they, they were a part of the Babylonian kingdom. That, that king was underneath the Babylonian kingdom and worked with Nebuchadnezzar. And it said he called the Chaldeans to show the dream, the king's dream. So they came before and stood before the king. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans to, to the king of Sarak, Sar O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the dream, and I will show thee interpretation. Well, if he had showed them the dream, the interpretation wouldn't have been that hard. See, he wanted somebody that really knew the mind of God and knew what this dream was and could tell him the dream as well as the interpretation. If I tell you it's 20 feet out yonder, you don't have to get a tape out and go measure 20 feet. It's 20 feet to there. Somebody say amen. So they, didn't, they wanted to con the king because they knew that they didn't have the answer. Only God had the answer. And that's the truth today with this situation of the world today. Only God has the answer. Only God can change the world around. Not just the United States, but the whole world needs change around. There is violence and killing. It says, as the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. It said, in the days of Noah, the thoughts were continually evil, and the violence was in the land. And never have we seen so much violence and so much evil in the land. Praise God. It's a terrible time. You don't know when something's going to blow up or when something's going to happen all over the world, not just here, but all over the world. And we're living in a dangerous age. When you send your kids to school, when you send your kids to college or wherever, you don't know what's going to happen, if they're going to come home the next day or not. Only by prayer and faith in God is that child spared its life when it leaves the house and comes back home safe. You ought to be thankful to see them walk back in the door. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But this kingdom was a great kingdom, and it was a glorious kingdom, and, and it was marveled. I mean, yeah, you would marvel at the structures and the beauty of the temples and the buildings that was built when, ba when the Babylonians built them, and the wall was their safety. And uh, let's go in, into the fifth verse. And the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, This thing is gone for me. If you will not make me known unto me the dream, and I've done that. I have dreamed dreams, Mama, and woke up, and that dream was so real when I was dreaming it, but when I woke up, I could not remember that dream. Somebody God's calling. I hear your phone ringing. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There, it's in the bulletin every Sunday, uh, but anyhow, I see, that's all right. Forget that. We don't want to get on that. Praise God. You will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, Ye shall but cut it in little pieces, and your houses shall meet be made a dunghill, like a fowl of manure. In other words, their houses, that they would be completely destroyed and done away with. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. But if you show the dream and the interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards and great honor. Therefore, show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. This is what their answer is. This is the world's answer to the problem today. This is their answer to the problem today. They have no answer. They have promises. They have all kinds of promises, but they don't really have no solution to the world's problems today. There'll never be peace until that deceiver comes upon the scene riding that right white horse without a sword or without a shield or without a spear, the Antichrist, and deceive the world for the first three and a half years, there will not be no peace. There will be no answer to the world's situation until then. Man shall kill themselves. There will be wars and rumors of war, pestilence, and all. They've got diseases. Now this new mosquito disease out, they have no cure. They no, have no way to combat it. And they say it is dangerous to the population of the world, not just the United States, but to the whole world. Why? 
because God is letting things happen in this hour. The pestilence, the disease, and the things happen that are trying to get men to repent and call on the name of the Lord, but they are not repenting. They're doing it like, like oh, the old king did. They're hardening their hearts. When God tried to bring the children out of Israel, they're hardening their hearts and, and turning their back on God and saying there is no God. But I got news for them. They're going to have to answer to God very soon. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the answer again said the king, tell this ser his servants the dream, and I will show thee the interpretation of it. And the king answered and said, I know certainly that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone for me. But if ye will not make known me the dream, but... The one uh, it's but one decree for you, and for ye prepared pre prepared lying and and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore, tell me the dream, and I and, and I shall know that ye can show me the interpretation thereof. And the Chaldeans answered, and this is the world's answer before the king, and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show thee. The king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that has, would ask such a thing of any magician or astrologer or Chaldeans. And that's the way it is today. You know, these politicians, every one of them, is going around the country and telling what they're going to do. How they're going to do this and how they're going to do that. But you know, one man don't rule the world anyhow. It is uh, the Congress, the Senate, but the Congress and the Senate is so weak, they don't have no power anyhow. They don't have no backbones or guts to stand up to, to make things right. But anyhow, let's get into this. The head is gold. You see that. The breastplate and the arms are silver. I don't know why he painted them black, but they're supposed to be silver. The, the, the thighs and stuff is brass. And then the legs are iron and the feet are iron and clay. You see, this, this thing is top-heavy. Gold weighs more than silver. Silver per ounce weighs more than brass. And brass weighs more than iron per ounce. So, and you see it gets, it gets cheaper and less expensive or less, less valuable as you go down the Galatians. The gold is, is worth more than the silver. The silver worth more than the brass. And the brass worth more than the iron. And the iron and clay is just powder, a pewter a metal. It's not worth nothing. It's not good for nothing, Harley. Even if you broke that, they've got metal like that today. Even if you break that, you can't even weld it and put it back together again. It's useless. It's no good. And that's what's going to happen to this in the end. The stone will be hewed out of the mount by man, not by man's hands, and will crush this thing in the foot. It's top heavy, and it will come over, and God will uh, pulverize it and crush it and destroy it from the top to the bottom. All right. Let's get over here in the, into my notes. Hallelujah. Let's start off here. The head of the image of Nebuchadnezzar's Saul was of gold. Daniel is giving the interpretation said to the king. Thou art this head of gold. God has given to him dominion over the nations of the world as existed that day. If you want to take notes, you can write this down at that time. Because the whole world, remember what I told you, it was in existence, but they didn't know how the whole world was. They couldn't go through the whole world at that time. And it may be said that as long as Nebuchadnezzar lived, except for his period of insanity, which I got ahead of myself a while ago, he exercised absolute control over the empire. Those who succeeded him were inferior in every way. Talking about the other kings after him. His son, an evil monarch, after an agonal region of the two years, he reigned for two years only, was assassinated by his brother-in-law, Nebuchadnezzar's brother-in-law, who then seized the throne for four years. Later, he was killed in battle, and his insensible son, uh, Labordos, reigned in nine year months and was beaten to death. Listen to this. And then Nebuchadnezzar, another son-in-law of Nebuchadnezzar, took the throne, and was in a military exposition, exposition, and when Belteshazzar, 
the second ruler was defeated and slain by Cyrus, the Medes and Persians. So the, 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 the Babylonian Empire, no matter how great it was, the Bible said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. As long as he was in control and was in rule, it was all right. But when he died and these other people took over and began to kill each other, murder each other like they're doing today, even, even with words, uh, our, the people running for president today in the United States of America, our country is so divided, it's pathetic, it's pitiful. The other world is looking at us and shaming us and, and saying what a mess the United States of America is because they're fighting each other and that's what the devil wants he wants us to fight each other when we fight each other he will destroy us divide us and defeat us glory to god you've got to be of the same mind and one mind and one accord though so the babylonian kingdom was falling apart and the Medes and the persians seen it was falling apart and they seized that opportunity to attack it to take over the kingdom of the world that's what the devil is doing. He is dividing the Christians. He is dividing churches. He is calling his people to split and to go against each other. But see, the thing of it is you war in the flesh. The Bible said uh, that we don't war in the flesh, we war in the spirit. It's not the fleshly man that's causing the trouble. It's the spiritual man, the demonic powers that get into people and cause them to do the evil that they do against one another. It's the devil. If you're of Jesus, you're not going to hurt each other. If you're really of God, you're not going to destroy each other. You're going to edify each other. You're going to build each other up. You're going to lift each other up. And that kingdom would have lasted had not it got divided and destroyed by within itself. And that's what's happening today. Our country is being destroyed and divided amongst itself. Lord, you ought to be shouting. Praise God. How many of you know I'm telling the truth? Uh, I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not an independent. I'm a Christian. Amen. And I told you in the beginning, if I voted, it'd be on the Bible. It'd be on the basis of the Bible. It wouldn't be because of what they're saying. Amen. Huh? Amen. It's like a joke I knew one time. This guy had a monkey. And uh, there was a bunch of fellas, coon hunters. And up where I come from, that's a big thing, coon hunting. It's big money. Back years ago, they'd sell the hides up north, and it was a big thing. A coon dog could cost three or $4,000, a good coon dog. So this guy walked up, and he said, my monkey is better than all your coon dogs put together. That guy said, you're crazy. He said, there ain't no monkey better than any coon dog. He said, yes, he is. He said, when they treat that coon, said, that dog can't go up there and get him but said, I can let this monkey go, and he'll run up that tree, and he'll throw that coon down where you can get him. <laughs> so the guy said, you're crazy. So the dogs, they tree. They, they started baying. If you don't know anything about coon, they'll sit at the bottom of that tree, and they'll just bay and bay and bay, and like they, they know that coon's up in that tree. Well, they brought the monkey over there, and the guy unchained him said, go get him. The monkey went up the tree, Brother Shane. He stayed about five minutes. He stayed ten minutes. And that guy said, see, I told you that monkey didn't know what he was doing. All of a sudden, the monkey come down the tree. He grabbed the shotgun and started shooting them dogs. That guy said, your monkeys went crazy. He's killing our dogs. He said, well, I forgot to tell you, one thing he hurts worse than a coon is a lion coon dog. Somebody <laughs> say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Huh? And that's the way the devil is. He wants us. To believe a lie that we might be damned. That we might be destroyed and our country might be separated and divided. Right now, they're stirring up racial things. They're stirring up all kinds of things. We know there's been racial things. We know there's people in both races that hate each other. But we as Christians should not take sides in none of that. We should love every man. We should even love the Muslim. We should love the Islamic. We should love 
them, them that are, are killing people, we still got to love them because of God said, you got to love your enemies and pray for them that despitefully use you. If you're a racist and you choose side with race, you're not a Christian. My God, I didn't get many amens in. I was with a guy the other day, and he said that N-word. I said, what did you say, sir? I said, I don't like to hear that. I said, that is not a word that ought to come out of a Christian. Amen. He began to apologize to me, and I said, I don't want to hear it no more either. Somebody say amen. amen. Lord, man, y'all with me. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not a lying coon dog. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't want to get shot. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. The Medes and the Persians had defeated the Babylonian kingdom and took it over. The Mede and the Persian Empire, which is silver, of silver, Cyrus captured Babylon on the night, on the night Belteshazzar saw the hand written on the wall. Listen to this. On the wall. And established the dual monarchy, 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 I'm saying it wrong, kingdom anyhow. The Medo-Persian Empire and was represented by the breast of the two, and the two arms of the image made of silver. But listen to this. The left arm of the image represented the Medes and the weaker of the two arms, kingdoms. The Medes were weaker than the Persians. So they were divided and it's here, see, right to begin with, we see that this kingdom ain't going to last because it's divided, even to begin with. Hallelujah. Anything divided, it won't last. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's the way with this church. We've had some divisions. We've had some separations. We, we've had people to separate people and take people off from this church. In the natural, this church should have folded. If we were in the natural and not ordained of God and appointed of God and called of God and this church was not put here by the Holy Ghost, Mama, we would have collapsed because when the members went and the tithing and stuff went, it hurt this church badly. But we made it. Why did we make it? Not because of ourselves, because upon this rock I'll build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Anybody that divides a church, splits a church, and causes it, tries to cause it to fail, that person is demonic and being used of the devil and not of God. Amen. Can't get no plainer than that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. 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 If you get a bird under your saddle, and you didn't like something I did, so you're going to separate, you're going to divide the church, and you're going to go start your own church instead of coming to me like a man. I told, I told a person, I said, you should have come to me like a man. I said, I would have helped you to start a church if you felt like you needed your own church. I said, we would have got it away from our summer. That's exactly what I told him. And I put him here in front of you and tell him the same thing. I said, I would have helped you start a church. But you build upon another man's foundation. So sooner or later, the storm's going to come, the rain's going to come, and it's going to be built on the sand, and it's going to be washed away. Because you can't be divided and stand for the Lord. Amen. Man, that's good teaching, Brother Hampton. My God, I'm glad you come tonight. Amen. Think about that. Hallelujah. My brother was a bishop in the Church of, God, Church of God of Prophecy in the state of Ohio. In the Cincinnati and Hamilton area, Dayton and Springfield. He was a great pastor. He was the walk, called the walking Bible he could quote over 42 scriptures at random, 4,200, I mean, scriptures at random, 42,000 scriptures at random. He could, it, you could turn the Bible anywhere you want to and point your finger and say, quote, blank this, blank that, and he would quote it to you. He had a photostatic mind and was a brilliant preacher and anointed with it. So when his church would get to 100, he would start training another pastor. When it got to 120, he would take 20 people and that pastor and go into another city close to that area and st rent a building or get a building and start another church. He started over seven churches for the Church of God of Prophecy. And you all go up there and look at the buildings today. They're magnificent, beautiful buildings, still keeping on the far line and on the far for God because they were built the right way and on the right foundation, not from a split. Amen. Glory. Glory. All right, let's get into this. 
I can't get it all. Now I got, I have beat my brains out on this thing. I've got eight pages here. I want to get them copied, and so you, we can give them out to you. But they're in my handwriting right now. I don't think you could even read them. I get so tired since I had the stroke when I get writing and reading for a long time. My pen just starts going across the page. Hallelujah. And I have to mark through it and start over again. But I made it. Praise God. By the grace of God, I made it. And we need some teaching as well as preaching. Hallelujah. All right, let's get back to this. The two arms of the image made of silver, and the left arm of the image represented Medes, the Medes. The weaker are the two kingdoms, and the right arm was the Persian kingdom, the stronger, Cyrus. It may be noted to, as mentioned by name in the scriptures by Isaiah nearly two, th- two, hundred, two, I'm sorry, two centuries before he lived. Before Cyrus lived. It was mentioned two, two, 200 years before that. In Isaiah 44, if you want to turn to it, the 28th verse. And we'll let you read it real quick. You see, this stuff was prophesied. This just didn't happen. This wasn't an act. Of, this wasn't a boom like these devils want to say that the world coming existence by this big explosion and big boom. Hallelujah! I, I I never heard such foolishness in my life. We were a tadpole, got on the land, turned into a frog, ended up as a monkey, and now we're a human being. My God, ain't that a miracle? Praise the Lord. God's a greater miracle worker than I thought He was. Somebody say Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a great big God, ain't he? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (laughs) Anybody find it? Isaiah, the 44th chapter, the 28th verse. 44. 28. What's it say? Read it. Amen. So Cyrus was prophesied 200 years before it even happened. God knew all about these kingdoms was going to come into existence. That's why he gave Daniel the dream. That's why Daniel, I mean Nebuchadnezzar, the dream, and gave Daniel the interpretation and the dream so he could explain to to Nebuchadnezzar that God was in control. He thought he was a king of the world. He thought he was in control. But when God got done with him through his insanity and everything else, he found out that God, the Jehovah, the, the Iowa, the Yahweh was in charge and not him. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the way with the, the government today. It used to be the government of the people for the people. The people used to vote and elect the president. Now we don't vote. Your vote really don't elect the president. Amen. Did you know that? Do you know what the caucuses and all this stuff is about? They, 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 the certain people are appointed, and then they've got to get all these uh, things, and then they, they are the ones that dominate who's going to be the president and not, not your vote. Your vote is uh, one president, one election here a while back, one man won all the, 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 the votes, but they did not let him be president because he didn't have the electoral votes, whatever you call it. So the people is no longer in control of this government. The government is controlled by certain people. Amen. Oh, my Lord. Good preaching, Brother Hampton. Hallelujah. After a succession of Persia, Persia bear with me here, Persian rulers and the Medo-Persian Empire gave way to the Grecian Empire. Now, we know the Grecian Empire was a mighty empire. Not all these empires were mighty. They were mighty warriors. They were strong, but some were just more eloquent. Like the, the Babylonian was an eloquent uh, empire. It was a beautiful empire. And, and then you get down to, uh, to the Medes and Persians. Now we're down to the Grecians. What was the Grecians famous for? For gods, for idols, for, 
false gods and all the mythical doctrines and things that are introduced even in the world today, even at Mars Hill when Paul was standing at Mars Hill and they had an altar inscribed to the unknown God. These people were above super, they were superstitious and served and hunted all kinds of gods and served all kinds of gods. And that's the way the Grecian Empire was. They were very, very mythical and very, very worshipped every kind of God. They created every God they could think of in the imagination of their mind and that's the day we're living in today people are worshiping every kind of God but Jehovah God somebody say amen they're worshiping everything but Jesus they're saying you can get to heaven in all kinds of ways all these big movie stars and everything uh, just in Carolina did you see that on the news they're boycotting this big singers boycotting Carolina another uh, big group is boycotting Carolina because they passed the law where they will not let uh, gender these people that are converted into men and women when they're really a woman or a man and they have this operation where they can go in the bathroom where a man uh, can go in the bathroom with your little girl and I preached that if you'll remember three or four years ago I said it was coming and I said it's going to happen and you people sat here and listened to me and it's happening right now. They passed a law that they couldn't go in there. Now they're being boycotted, and then all these big, and even some of the big companies is going to move out of Carolina because they're standing for uh, uh, they want to they want to favor the homosexuals and the lesbian movement. That's only eighty eight percent of our population. Where is the other ninety eight percent of our population? Where is our backbone? Where is the churches at on these issues? Glory to God. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Good preaching, brother. I'm teaching. I don't want my little granddaughter to go into a bathroom with a man standing there urinating in front of her. I don't want my little son to go into a bathroom and a woman sitting there squatting in front of him, urinating or whatever she's doing in that bathroom. Come on. What you was don't, don't count because the blood cleanses all sin. If you were in that lifestyle and you repented, you're, you're just as clean as I am. Amen. I'm talking about people that are practicing that kind of lifestyle is on their way to hell and they're going to split hell wide open. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Good, good teaching, Brother Hampton. Amen. And that don't even cost you nothing extra. We done took the offering. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. All right, let's get into this. All right, the third world empire was Greece and was represented by the belly of brass and the, of the image. Its first ruler was Alexander the Great, was reviled in a vision of Daniel, revealed in a vision of Daniel. His empire was divided into four parts and after Alexander's death, these fell one, be, one by one to the Romans until a few years before Christianity, the Roman Empire was established a few years before Christ come upon the scene. Here's, here's a division again. This empire, this, this Grecian Empire is divided now into four parts. Every one of these has been divided one way or another. And a kingdom divided against itself, Jesus said it out of his own mouth, cannot stand. When they accused him of casting out devils by the prince of devils, he said a kingdom divided against itself shall not stand. They couldn't stand because they also were divided into four parts. Amen. Ain't it good? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And it says the Roman Empire was established right before Christ come on the scene. The term thighs should read... Uh, thigh parts for the upper part of the body including the belly represents Greece. The thighs and the legs made of arm belong to the fourth kingdom Rome which is which in the year uh, 364 AD was divided into the western and an eastern empire. That was the legs of iron are now being divided. The Romans have took over, and now they're divided into two empires. Praise God. Are you getting anything out of this? I hope so. I studied off of iron. Praise the Lord. The fourth empire represented the iron was, as we have seen, 
Rome. Its, its superiority lay in its strength. For as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, so the kingdom broke into pieces all that resisted it. The kingdom in the 4th century A.D. was divided into two parts as represented by the two legs of, of the image, the legs being the longest part of the body. Therefore, they indicate that Rome was to be in existence a much longer time than the other three kingdoms. Do you get that? Praise God. The legs are a lot longer than the rest of the body by this. Come on, man, help me, Lord. Praise God. The final days of the fourth kingdom were represented by the, by the feet and the toes of iron and clay. It is instructive to note that the composition of the image, there is a steady, and I said this a while ago, I got ahead of myself, deterioration of the quality of the materials. First gold, first silver, then brass, then iron, now iron and clay. So it is, it is, it is getting weaker and less valuable all the time. If you would look at the Roman Empire, how they ruled the whole world, how, how that they did the Christians and beheaded and crucified. They crucified so many Christians. They, as history says in Josephus that they run out of trees. They didn't have no more trees to crucify anybody in a certain locations of Rome. They would crucify them. They would put them in, in, in the, these arenas and put them in tie, put the man on crosses all around the arena, inside the arena. Then they would take their wives and their children, and they would take them in the arenas and let them go running all over the arena. And then they would turn loose the wild dogs and the wild animals, and these men would have to watch. These are Christians I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that are Christians like you are that had to see this horrible thing their husbands would lay there and them fathers on them crosses and could not defend or help their children. And they, the wild animals would tear them apart and rip them apart and destroy them right in front of their eyes. And then when that was over with, then they would take these men and kill them on the crosses and torture them and mistreat them. You think you've got it rough? You ought to live during that period of time. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And it's going to happen again during the Great Tribulation period. Amen. It's going to happen again. Right. Somebody said, well, we're fixing to get raptured out. We better get out of here pretty quick. Amen. Huh? Amen. We better get out pretty quick. We're already losing our rights as churches. Amen. We're already losing our rights. Amen. They're already attacked in the Christian population. Uh, and most of you know this. We, we've heard it before, and I don't want to keep repeating myself. You can go to any government function you want to and pray in the name of Buddha. You can pray in the name of Mohammed. You can pray in the name of Hare Krishna. You can pray in the name of God. But you cannot pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Billy Graham's son will not attend a prayer meeting in the capital no more because they told him he could not pray in the name of Jesus Christ. What happened to America? What is going on in America today? Why, and you know, we're afraid to say anything. Listen, I mean, people are afraid to speak up. They're going to take me off of this saying sooner or later because I'm going to still preach it. Glory to God. I ain't backing down from it. All they can do is put me in jail. I've been in jail before. Ain't no new thing on me, praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. I tell you something that happened to me, but you might, I better leave it alone. But anyhow, God is warning the people to get ready for his coming. When I was a boy, Brother Mullins is a minister of the gospel for many years. They preached on dispensations. They said every 2,000 years, is a dispensation, and you can study it by the Bible. From, from the creation to Noah was, was 2,000 years. From Noah to David was 2,000 years. From David to Christ was 2,000 years. And they said from Christ to the co second coming of Jesus would be 2,000. How many of you ever heard that preach when you young? Well, I got news for you. We're past the 2,000-year mark. 
We're about 16 years past that time clock. Huh? And he didn't say he would lengthen time. He said he would shorten the time or even the very elect. So God's table is not what man tried to put on paper. It's his own table. It's his own time clock. It ain't that he shortened his days. It ain't that he's uh, 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 shortened his coming. He'll be right on time. But you got to be ready, glory to God. You know not the day or the hour. You got to be ready for the second coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard this argument, and I'm not getting into trib, P-trib, or nothing else. Per, you know, I'm not doing that. But I heard this argument one time. This fellow was preaching on the rapture, and I believe in the catching away, just like everybody in this building. And he said that Christ wouldn't let his bride be drugged through anything, talking about the tribulation. So after church, I went up and asked him a question. I said, was Matthew... And all the apostles and all the Christians during the apostolic age, were they Christians? Were they a part of the body of Christ? Were they a part of the bride of Christ? He said, yes. I said, well, why weren't they raptured out of it? Huh? Praise the Lord. Amen. See, you've got to be careful because we don't know the day of the hour. We don't know what's ahead of us yet. We, we know by the scriptures and by the signs of the time that his coming is near in hand. But we don't know what we've got to go through yet, man. There is people in the world that's living great tribulation right now. I know the great tribulation ain't in effect right now because it would cover the whole world. But in certain parts of the world, people are going through great tribulation. They're being killed and tortured for the testimony of Jesus Christ. You go tell them that they don't go through do nothing. And that don't cost you nothing extra. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say, amen. it's food for thought, ain't it? Amen. I had a woman tell me, said, if I had to go through that stuff, I wouldn't serve the Lord. Oh. Said, God, she was listening to all these prosperity preachers and everything, you know, wealth and houses and homes and everything. I said, lady, you better watch what you say now. It wasn't but a few years, sister. She lost her home, lost a husband that worked 80 hours a week. Lost everything that she had and backslid and quit going to church because of material things. Because she was taught materiality instead of spirituality. Come on, church. Praise God. I'm not serving God for what or not. I'm serving God to go to the kingdom of heaven and because I love Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen. amen. If I wanted money, I'd still be back in the business I used to be back in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Let's get out of this. Hallelujah. I can't do it all one night, so it's impossible. But I'm laying a foundation in hope that you're getting something out of this. Amen. Glory to God. Let's go on up here and read some more. It says, knowledge has, has, has greatly increased as power is, and it's given people power for destruction. Witness the monstrous Adolf Hitler of our generation who led Germany to a savage barbarism that resulted in the murder of six million Jews in the gas ovens. This was violence and savagery which will reach a climax in the days of the Antichrist who shall give vent to this hatred of Christianity in an attempt to exterminate Christians from the face of the earth. We are seeing that today. You know, I'm going to say this. I'm not going to hold you much later. The world is in love with the Christians, and Christians are in love with the world right now. I mean, you can be a, you can be a topless dancer and be a Christian anymore than most, most people. I mean, there's no standard. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's no standard. I mean, people, people claim to be Christians on television uh, that are country western singers that still drink a beer singing in a honky-tonk, and still living the same life they always lived. Huh? That is not a Christian. That is, that is a, conf a counterfeit Christian. Somebody say amen. And a poor excuse at that. Praise God. But if we're going to live a holy life, we got to separate ourselves from the world. Brother Shane has been teaching this and teaching it and teaching it and teaching it. we got to come out from among the world and be ye separate. Somebody say amen. And we'll get into more detail on this. I'm going to close here in a minute. I want to finish this. Hallelujah. 
exterminate Christians from the face of the earth. The ten toes of the image represents the final form of the times of the Gentiles. The iron and the clay of the toes, which do not mix, portray the division of the Gentile world. And we see that today. The iron and the clay are, are mingled together, but they do not cleave one to another. In other words, Brother Shane is a mason, and he does what well, Brother Shane can do anything, put his hand through. But he'll tell you, you can't mix iron and clay. They will not cleave to each other. There's no way that they'll cleave. You can separate them so easily. So this ten federation of nations as things to become into existence in the very near future, uh, they're going to be separate people. Some of them are going to be from the Christian side of the earth and others from the other side of the earth, but they will not cling together. Sooner or later, they will be divided and be a division because they're not of the same faith. They're not of the same mind. They're not of the same thought, and it will not last. It cannot last, praise the Lord. I'm not going to get into nothing else of this because there's too much here to get into for you to, to comprehend all in one night. And it says, clearly the iron represents fa fascism and the clay communism. At times, these two elements appear to the, be united, but eventually they come into conflict. It was true in World War II, and it will be true in the final conflict of the ages. Hitler and the Russia made a league together, which afterwards fell apart, and Hitler turned on them and tried to destroy them and kill them. And had not the United States and the British Empire come to their rescue, he would have annihilated them and killed every one of them and made slaves out of them. And that's the same way it's going to be with the ten toed kingdom. It cannot stand by itself. Come on, church. Praise God. We're going to close there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But God is good. We got to page three. We got five more to go. So praise the Lord. But God is good. And we've got to get ready for all this that's taking place. We already see the Federation of Nations. We already got the League of Nations already put together. And I can name every, most of them. I got them wrote down here. And I can name the Communist uh, Federation, too. I got it wrote down here. But we'll get into it, uh, the next, not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday after that. I might read you one more little chapter here. The clay, however, represents more than the communism or Russia. It is a symbol of socialism. Who is running against Hillary? Sanders. What is Sanders' platform? Socialists. Socialism. <laughs> Coming pretty close. See, that's what Hitler tried to teach the people. His first, his first, his first platform was he. Was, everybody was going to have the hospital. Everybody was going to have a doctor. Everybody was going to have the same kind of wages, the same kind of money. There was not going to be uh, a higher class or a lower class or a middle class. Everybody would be the same class. That's what the uh, that liar Hitler told his people. But he turned on them like a mad dog. Amen. And when he finally got, got them persuaded and got them under his authority and got an army big enough to back him, he enslaved them people and then tried to kill them and destroy them. Amen. Come on now. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Socialism is a bad thing, so, but it would be a good thing if it was done right. Yes. Because everybody would have a doctor. Everybody would have a hospital. Everybody would be on equal. But it ain't going to happen. The only way that's going to happen is the first three and a half years of the Antichrist when he's a great deceiver and brings peace to the world and brings the answer to all the world's problems and everybody thinks they got it made and on easy street. Mm -hmm. But at the middle of that week, of the seven weeks, of seven years, and that three and a half years at the middle of that, he'll become the mad dog just like Hitler was that, that God in, that knew he was going to be from the beginning, the son of perdition. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen for amen. me. All right, we love you. I hope you got something out of this. But God is really wanting us to get ready for the end time and the coming of the Lord. We're looking at a bad day, church. Hallelujah. He said, to look up and rejoice, for we know our redemption draws nigh. I do, but I am burdened for my children. I am burdened for my lost loved ones. 
that's going to be caught in this mess. Yes. And if the catching away takes place in the very near future, they're going to be left. Yes. And I don't, I don't like that book left behind. I don't like the movie left behind. It, it gives people a loophole to live bad until the great tribulation period. Then they can get saved. My God, I ain't going to wait until the great tribulation amen. to get saved. I'm going to get saved now. Yes. Somebody yes. say amen. amen. I ain't going to wait till then. So you can't buy or sell or exchange or do nothing, man. That'd be it. They ain't gonna get saved, but grace, they're gonna get saved just so they can eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Somebody say amen. Anybody amen. got any comments? Amen. You got any comments? Praise the Lord. I love everyone. I hope I said something. Make you go home and study. Make you go home and, and, and get a hold of something. Praise the Lord. And and find out something. And and I, I don't want to I don't want to mislead none of you yes. to, you know. And our, our, and this evil forces are rising up and are gaining more and more a cat a can to see in in the America there is an over increasing trend to defy and rebel against all constituted authority this can only result in anarchy and chaos and lust control with an iron hand that could o o mean the rise of the dictator and a dictatorship speaks of the iron of the fascism both the iron and the clay are the spirit of the beast the antichrist god bless you good night love you praise the lord amen <laughs>